fabulous fourth grade parents, and welcome to Parent Quick Smart, Episode 2, Understanding Patterns of Estimation and Multiplication for Unit 2. In this unit, students will dive right into some challenging word problems. These problems are not difficult because of their content, they're challenging because of the problem-solving situation the students are given. Students will rely heavily on their knowledge of multiplication and division facts from third grade. When solving problems like these, students should use a graphic organizer such as this KWPL chart to organize their information and to figure out what they need to do to solve the problem. Let's look at a KWPL chart. The K stands for what do I know? That's where students put the information that the problem gives them. The W stands for what do I want to know? This is the part where students put what the question is asking and what they need to find out. The P is what is my plan? This is where students develop a plan to solve the problem. And the L, what did I learn? This is where students record their answer and also check for reasonableness and ask themselves, does this answer make sense? And does it answer the question that I was asked? Let's look at what some of these problems could look like. Ashley has three times as many baseball cards as Meredith. Meredith has five cards. How many cards does Ashley have? Now, let's look at what a model for this problem might look like. We know, what we know from the problem is that Ashley has three times as many baseball cards as Meredith. So if Meredith has one group of cards, Ashley would have three groups of cards. So you can see that's drawn in the model. Next, we know that Meredith has five. So if Meredith has five, Ashley has three groups of five. What we don't know is how many cards Ashley has. So that's what our variable will be. Now students will be required to write an equation that matches this model. So three times five equals N. And that's an equation that matches what Ashley has. Now students will use their knowledge of basic facts to know that three times five equals 15. So N equals 15. Let's look at another problem. Ashley has three times as many baseball cards as Meredith. Together, they have 20 baseball cards. How many cards does Meredith have? How many cards does Ashley have? You can see this problem is similar because it still uses that three times as many, but this time we have more missing information. So let's look at a model. Again, we're gonna use that one group for Meredith and three groups for Ashley because that's what we know from the problem, that Ashley is three times as many as Meredith. What we don't know is how many cards Meredith has. So Meredith must have N cards. If Meredith has N, we know Ashley has three groups of those N. Now we know that all together that equals 20 cards. So you can see we have four groups of N equals 20. So four times N equals 20. Now that's not difficult for students to figure out. Four times five equals 20. So N must equal five. Now if Meredith has five cards, Ashley has those 15 cards, just like we did in that last problem. Let's look at one more problem that's similar to these last two. Ashley has 15 baseball cards. Meredith has five. How many more cards does Ashley have than Meredith? You can see, what do we know? Well, we know the number of cards Ashley has, so we drew that in. And we know Meredith has five cards, which is less than 15. Now, what we don't know is that difference between Ashley and Meredith. So that's what's drawn in by that variable. We can write an equation, 15 minus five equals N. And we can solve that equation, 15 minus five equals 10. So N must equal 10. As you can see, none of these problems look exactly the same. Students are challenged to figure out what the problem is asking and how to solve it. When solving these, it's really important for students to use that KWPL chart and ask themselves, what do they know? What do they want to know? And what plan of action should they use to solve the problem? Next, students are going to move into patterns of multiplication. These might be some patterns that you've already seen before. You might know that zero trick of just moving the zero or counting the number of zeros and moving that number of zeros into your product. That's a trick we want our students to eventually develop, but we want them to understand why that works and to know those patterns of multiplication. So let's look at some models to help students understand. 
you can see in the top group of models, we have four groups of six ones is 24 ones. You can see it drawn out on a number line and you can see it drawn as a quick pick. Now next, let's move down into the groups of 10. We have four times 60. Well, we know that 60 is six tens. So we have four groups of six tens. Well, we know four groups of six is 24. So four groups of six tens is 24 tens or 240. Moving on, we have four groups of 600. So four groups of 600 is 24 hundreds or 2,400. Furthermore, we have four groups of 6 thousands, which is 24 thousands. We want students to see this pattern instead of just learning that, can, that trick to move the zeros. Now students are going to use this understanding of patterns to start to estimate products. So let's look at how that works. We have 62 times 54. Remember, this unit, students do not have the skills to multiply 62 times 54. But we do know how to estimate, and we know how to use patterns to multiply. So if we estimate it, we know that 62 is close to 60, and 54 is close to 50. Now, we're not looking for rounding rules. We're just looking for friendly or compatible numbers. Now I can take my knowledge of patterns to know that 6 times 5 equals 30. So 60 times 50 equals 3,000. So I know that 62 times 54 is about 3,000. This helps us to estimate. It also helps us be, when we learn multiplication to give us an, an estimate to check for reasonableness once we find our actual product. Here are some questions to ask your child. Remember those two important questions from before. What is information do I know from the problem? And what is the question asking me? We also can ask questions in those problems like what quantities are you comparing? And then when students are estimating, we need to remember what is the closest number that will be easy to multiply by. We have some real world connections for multiplication. The actual connections are absolutely endless because multiplication is everywhere. You can use it when finding area. You can estimate the number of people at a ball game. If I know that there are about 200 people in my section and there are 45 sections at Raymond James Stadium, about how many people are at Ray J? You can also use it when traveling or anything with mileage. If I know that my car gets 45 miles to the gallon and I have 18 gallons of gas, how far would I be able to travel? And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching Parent Quick Smart. Remember to check these websites for more information and to always keep in communication with your child's teacher. See you next time.